Howdy and welcome YouTube motorcycle enthusiasts. Today I bring to you another video about motorcycle obsession and two of my favorite things in particular, the Suzuki DR650 that I bought last year and Farkles. As some of you know, I picked up the DR650 last year and I really, really enjoyed the bike in the short time that I was able to ride it before the weather turned kind of, yeah. But I wanted to go over the first five Farkles that I purchased and installed on the Suzuki DR650 last fall. The previous owner had already installed his fair share of uh, mods or Farkles to the bike before I got it. And I really agree with pretty much everything that he did. Uh, he put on a skid plate. He uh, bought a aftermarket gas tank, which wasn't actually on the bike. He had taken it back off, but was included in the sale. He installed a Yoshi exhaust, which is very popular here in the United States. And he installed Enduro Engineering handguards, which not my first choice of handguards. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just they look a little small to me, and I feel like you need something more brawny on the DR650, but hey, they're paid for and they work and, and they look fine. But those were his Farkles and I needed to install my own Farkles. You know, it, I'm kind of glad the bite didn't have all of the Farkles that I would want to install. Uh, you can't bond with it that way. And, you know, Farkling is part of the fun for a lot of us out there. Before I move on and talk about the first five Farkles that I've installed, I wanted to talk to y'all about my Farkleosophy. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I use these uh, rules as a loose guideline to uh, sort of clarify why I might do what I do to the bike and to help me uh, keep from indulging in things that won't net a real benefit to me on the motorcycle. Rule number one, I'm not looking to change the DR650 into something vastly different than Suzuki had intended when it left the engineering department in Japan. You could turn a DR650, I suppose, into something like a cafe racer or into a round-the-globe uh, adventure bike, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that I've got two other bikes downstairs right now, and um, they both serve unique purposes in addition to the DR. And I'd rather keep the DR focused on the things that it was good at uh, and that attracted me to it in the first place rather than make it into uh, something that it's not. Rule number two, I want to make sure that I do not modify the DR650 or any motorcycle for that matter for every possible scenario. Uh, I want to be able to ride the bike in situations where it excels, you know, 80% of the time or more. But, you know, guys and gals, if I make this bike to deal with every possible thing that could come up, it's not going to be good at anything or great at anything. So I don't need to farkle it for every possible scenario. It's just not what I'm looking to do. Rule number three, suspension is fair game. I know I mentioned I didn't want to transform the bike into something vastly different than it's not. But let's face it, we all look at spec sheets, or at least most of us, when we buy a motorcycle. And the spec sheets convey things like weight, horsepower, tire size, suspension, travel, you know, and those other kinds of measurable things. But it's really difficult to quantify the way a motorcycle is sprung and dampened on a spec sheet. And most motorcycles that I've encountered that are mid-priced and below in their respective tiers, uh, you know, the manufacturer has cheaped out there. And I think it's because they can't really quantify it on a spec sheet. It's not a great selling point in many cases. Yeah, I know KTM has made, uh, you know, a lot of noise about their suspension setup uh, on their bikes. And, you know, that's sort of their thing. But I think Suzuki, Honda, you know, all these dual sports, they all seem to be very, very softly sprung. Uh, so I'm fine with modifying the suspension on the bike, uh, you know, to be adequate or more than adequate uh, for the 80% of the situations that I'll find myself riding it in. And uh, I think that's just something you have to do on a mid-price motorcycle in any respective segment for the most part. Rule number four, any weight that I add to the bike, be it hand guards, be it luggage mounts, be it um, bash plates, you know, whatever, I'm looking to subtract that weight somewhere else. 
uh, whether that's a lightweight battery or an aftermarket exhaust, which the bike already has. So, uh, you know, that kind of is what it is. But I'm looking to keep the weight of the bike uh, around what it started out as, which I think is about 360 pounds dry for the DR650. That's fairly light compared to a lot of street bikes, but very heavy for a quote-unquote dirt bike, although this is a dual sport. Uh, I'm also aware that I am probably the heaviest accessory uh, that that bike will ever see. I sure hope so. Uh, but I probably don't need to be as heavy as I am. Uh, I am an American, close to six feet tall, and uh, had way too much junk food over the holidays. So, uh, yeah, I could probably stand to lose 15 or 20, and that's a lot cheaper uh, than any fancy aftermarket thing I could do to the bike to lessen the weight. So yeah, I'm going to keep my own weight, uh, in mind as well as I go down the modification road. All right, moving on. The first thing I did to the Suzuki DR650 was swap the stupid headlight. Um, I don't really care for the factory 1990s technology headlight. Uh, I prefer something more modern, like an LED projection unit, which is what I bought. I ended up getting the headlight from JNS Engineering, in particular the DOT uh, model. Um, there might be more than one. Uh, and I bought the chrome uh, bezel version. I did not know there was a black version at the time. Had I known that, I probably would have chose that. Uh, but I like the way the chrome looks. I'm not going to mess with it. Uh, and the headlight performs very well at night. It definitely suits these middle-aged eyes a lot better than the factory 1990s technology did. Uh, it's a very easy mod. If you have some extra hardware laying around, it might take you 15 minutes to do it. Tops, uh, that's with drinking a beer. Uh, I had to make a quick run to the hardware store because it was missing something I don't exactly recall what size nut it was, like maybe an eight millimeter. I don't know. There was something missing in the box that I was able to get at the hardware store. So yeah, no big deal. Farkle number two. Uh, I hated the Suzuki DR650's front fender. It looks flat and floppy, like some kind of plastic shovel. It flaps around in the wind like a big hound dog's ear. Just not the biggest fan of that thing. And I know it has a lot of hate online as well. Uh, ended up getting a universal front fender from Polysport. And that took a little longer than the headlight to install. Not difficult, though. And, uh, yeah, man, it looks great on the bike. It really sort of brings the bike styling a little forward. Uh, not that it has very far to go because motorcycle styling for dual sports hasn't changed a lot in the last 30 years. Um, but yeah, combined with that headlight, I think the bike looks very, you know, 2020s, uh, if you will. Uh, so yeah, I totally dig the fender. It doesn't flap around nearly as much in the wind as the factory piece, but it does still wobble. And it didn't solve my front end wobble issue, uh, which I'm 99% certain is related to either tire balance or just the tire choice itself. Uh, no big deal, but uh, highly recommend this mod if you don't like the way the front fender looks. Farkle number three, and this could end up being the most important of the mods that I've done to the bike so far, and that would be a upgraded oil cooler guard. Now, I'm referring to the screen that Suzuki puts in front of the oil cooler from the factory and not the sort of U-shaped bar that's there to prevent damage to the oil cooler in the event of a tip-over. But that screen that they provide is very flimsy. I mean, it is you could just like push it with your finger, and the grating on it is very large, and that's great for airflow, but not great for protecting it from debris. So this particular oil cooler guard is made from four millimeter polished aluminum and bolts right up, no problems. Uh, again, well, okay, not entirely true. I had to go to the hardware store again to pick up a few things. Uh, starting to be a trim with this bike. But anyway, got the oil cooler guard on without any major issues. It looks great on the motorcycle. And I haven't noticed any significant changes to the running temp, although it was the fall when I rode it. And I will be monitoring the running temperature of the motorcycle this summer to see how it goes. Uh, is it being negatively impacted by this oil cooler guard? Uh, do, I, do I need to think about some other way to protect the oil cooler while not uh, impacting the 
cooling performance of the oil cooler to be determined y'all but so far so good looks great can't say that i recommend it or not recommend it at this time because it's just uh, because the jury's out sparkles number four and five i'm gonna cover these last two together because i installed them at the same time so i hated the dr650's factory tail lamp it was big and bulky and square it kind of juts off the back fender like something you might find on a school bus or something. It just looks so out of place on the motorcycle. A lot of motorcyclists replaced this tail lamp with the tail lamp from the DR250 and 350, and I did the same thing. The replacement of the tail lamp makes such a world of difference to the aesthetics of the rear of the DR650. I recommend this wholeheartedly. The factory tail lamp uses three bolts and the replacement tail lamp uses two of the three. So you might wanna put some silicone or something on the third hole, and that'll keep moisture from creeping up in there. The fifth and final farkle is the Suzuki luggage rack. I installed this, I chose this rack because it was a factory piece, and I thought it would be high quality. While I wouldn't say the luggage rack is of poor quality, the tolerances of it remind me of some kind of Chinese aftermarket piece. I just had a hard time lining up the bolts where they needed to go on the motorcycle. It's like the jig was a little bit off uh, at Suzuki's factory. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but uh, not a huge problem. The bigger problem is the Suzuki luggage rack doesn't uh, give you any guidance on how to route the turn signal cables. And it kind of leaves them dangling um, up underneath the fender and I even checked this against photos online and it looks the same way on Suzuki's uh, little thumbnail so not a huge fan of that and I think I have a workaround I'm going to try to implement which is I'm going to put some small holes one on each side of the fender and a grommet on each side of the fender and hopefully I can route the cables up through those holes and thereby eliminate the dangling cable thing but uh, y'all, I don't really recommend this luggage rack. Now, I haven't tried any others, and uh, maybe I'll end up doing that because I'm not totally stoked with this one. So maybe shop around and consider how you're going to need to route your turn signal cabling uh, if you have to relocate the turn signals for whatever luggage rack that you choose. If you have some suggestions on other luggage racks that are of high quality and similar functionality to the Suzuki luggage rack, but provide a better turn signal cable routing option, even if that means leaving the turn signals in the factory locations, let us know in the comments below. I'm sure other DR650 riders would love to hear about them. So those are my first five Farkles, y'all. As you've heard, I'm not completely satisfied with the luggage rack, but the rest of them, I dig. What Farkles or modifications have you made to your DR650 or other enduro bike? I mean, I'd love to hear from the CRF 300 riders out there or DRZ riders as well. Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. You'll know when new videos are published to the channel and it would really help this channel grow. Until next time, y'all, keep it shiny side up and ride safe.